The mechanics of the takeover are already in, in operation. What if a retailer could tell how a shopper really feels about a dress on sale at their store, just by the look on their face? That may not quite be science fiction. Companies are already amassing and analyzing thousands of bits of data from software-enabled cameras that can detect emotions on people's faces. Once you know how the face works, it's an extraordinary system because it not only tells you who you are, but how you're feeling at that moment. It's our best window into the brain. Dr. Paul Ekman is perhaps the world's greatest face reader. In the late 70s, the psychologist pioneered a facial coding system that can uncover clues about emotions people are trying to hide by analyzing tens of thousands of tiny muscular movements in their face. For example, you could be saying you like something, but a flick of an eyebrow or a smirk that lasts just a millisecond could reveal disgust. Ekman's work has been used to train hundreds of thousands of people, including psychologists, interrogators at the Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq, and was even the basis for the Fox TV show Lie to Me. And now, thanks to technological advances, his work is getting new life as the inspiration for startups that are teaching computers to recognize emotions. It's a big data story. The companies have trained their software on thousands of men and women of different races and ethnicities and under different lighting conditions to amass what may be the largest visual catalog of human emotion that exists. These tools have the potential for social good. For example, someone with autism could use the software to read emotions on people's faces that they have trouble perceiving on their own. But Ekman is nervous about some of the implications of the software. He warns that it needs to be used carefully and that automation presents unique challenges and questions. For example, how private are your emotions? I certainly don't want anyone analyzing my facial expressions when I'm walking down the street or when I'm standing in a supermarket. It's a slippery slope and we're already slipping on that slope of invading privacy without at least notification. I certainly don't want them doing it if they haven't asked my permission. Most of the software is being used by market researchers to measure engagement as they scan people's faces while they test drive a car or watch an ad. Emotion has embedded its software into store security cameras so they can detect people's emotions as they stroll through the aisles. The software is being embedded into a video chat app called Uvu that could allow people to detect one another's feelings while chatting. When the software is turned on, it analyzes the caller's facial expressions for the micro-indicators of feelings, like joy or boredom, during the call. When you develop a new tool, whether it's a microscope or the facial action coding system, it's a double-edged sword. It can be used for the good, to help people. It can be used to exploit people. You don't have control over its use. The government, I hope, will recognize the need for regulations about the use of this new technology in public places.